Welcome to Who Is Wednesday, and on this Who Is Wednesday, we're going to talk about the FDIC. The FDIC is the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Now the FDIC, we first heard mention of when we talked about the OCC. And what they do is the FDIC, they preserve and promote public confidence in the U.S. financial institution. The FDIC preserves and promotes confidence in the U.S. financial system by insuring deposits in banks and institutions for at least $250,000. Now they do this first by identifying, monitoring, and addressing the risk to the deposit insurance funds and by limiting the effect on the economy when the financial system or the bank fails. The FDIC is actually an independent agency of the government. They were created back in 1933 and they were created by the actual 1933 Banking Act. You know, well, not a real fancy name, but hey, that's what it is. And you may recall if you know your history real well, I love the history of banking. One of the things that the professor does, you know, again, you listen to the podcast, you're probably familiar with our format of where we talk about the past, the present, and the possibilities. And I like telling you about the past so you understand where we are now and how we got there. The FDIC was created because it was in response to thousands of bank failures that were taking place at that time. Now this occurred in the early 19, well, actually actually late mid 1920s and early 1930s. And we would have what we would call like a bank run. Now what's a bank run or a run on a bank? It occurs when a lot of people think or feel like their money's in jeopardy or in danger and that the bank's gonna fail. So everybody just goes and pulls all the money out causing the bank to actually collapse and to fail. Since the start of the FDIC on January 1st, 1934, no depositor no depositor has lost a single cent of insured funds as a result of the failure. Now the assurance limit was initially $2,500. That was per category, per ownership category. It's definitely gone up a lot since then, you know, I guess inflation, right? And in fact, we saw, uh, you hear a lot about Dodd-Frank in the banking industry. Well, the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act of 2011, it actually insured and or increased it to be the $250,000 ownership limit that we see now. So each depositor is insured at least $250,000 per bank. Other things are how does the FDIC accomplish all this? Well, what they do is they examine and they supervise about 4,000 different banks. But they are also known to come in when a bank fails. We haven't seen it recently, at least not that I'm aware of, and it's not something I go and research anymore. It was something I did pay attention to a lot back in like 2008 and 2009 we saw a lot of bank failures. And what would happen is the FDIC would come in and they would take over the bank. Now in taking over the bank, what we really see in a bank failure or the closing of a bank is that the FDIC becomes named the receiver for the bank's access because its capital levels are just too low now to be able to operate and they're unable to meet their obligations. After a bank's assets are placed into receivership, the FDIC acts in two capacities. First, what they do is they pay the insurance to the depositors up to the deposit insurance limits for assets that are not sold to another bank. Second, what they do, as the receiver of the failed bank, they assume the task of selling and collecting assets for the failed bank and selling its debits, including claims for depositors in excess of the insured limit. If you remember, this happened a lot again, like I said, back in 2008. And what they will really do is they'll work with another bank to be able to take over, maybe you know, take some of the loss to take over the bank. If you do see FDIC people coming in and they're doing their regulations and auditing of you, that's the purpose of it. They're here to be able to make sure to supervise our banks so that we are operating in a safe and proper manner. In this particular um, payments professor video, I'm offering extra credit. If you'd like extra credit, what you'll do is I'm going to give you a question here. You'll need to go to paymentsprofessor.com forward slash extra credit where you'll be able to join the extra credit club and you'll gain access to be able to find the answers to these videos. What was the first banking or deposit insurance system in the U.S. and its bank supervision for the U.S. considered to have begun? In other words, when did it begin? When did we really see the beginning of supervision of financial institutions and when did it actually begin? Again, for your answer, go to 
um, payments professor forward slash extra credit to be able to find out. Until then, I would love to hear your comments down below, any questions you have. If you would like some future videos, there's somebody you'd like to have featured on a Who Is Wednesday, let me know. I'll do the research. I'll get that information out to you. I'll give you, of course, my point of view, a little bit of history on them where I can, and what makes them relevant to the banking industry. If you don't want to put it in the comments, you can just go ahead and you can always just send me a message or email me, payments or Kevin at paymentsprofessor.com. And if you would, please like the video or like and follow me on YouTube. I greatly appreciate that. Look forward to seeing you guys in the future and hope you have a wonderful Who Is Wednesday.